I don't know how many of your listeners that ever went to the FBI and told them they're stealing a billion dollars a year, but I can tell your listeners, and it was an interesting reaction. That phone in the FBI's office was ringing off the hook. It reached the attorney general. It reached the director of the FBI. This became the largest white-collar price-fixing case in U.S. history. If one goes to the FBI museum today at the FBI headquarters, it has all the equipment I wore undercover in the museum. Steven Soderbergh is the one who, had, who bought the rights for the book, The Informant, from New York Times. He had a script written in the year 2000. We walked the red carpet with Matt Damon, and we were at the premiere. And, and I met those FBI agents at 6 o'clock six o'clock in the morning, Monday through Friday, for three years. And wore a wire, 8, 9, 10 hours a day, every day for three years. One of the longest durations of anybody wear a wire in U.S. history. And I'm blowing leaves off this driveway at 3 in the morning. Because I couldn't sleep at night, I kept thinking, what are these guys above me? I'm one of the largest companies in the world, 56th largest company in America, going to do to me when they learned that I turned them in and they're going to go to prison because of me. What are they going to do with me? In the end, I ended up telling on them by wearing a wire, and they ended up telling on me. And we all went to prison, the four top executives at ADM, but for different things. Three of them went to prison for price fixing, and I went to prison for that $9 million fraud. I got, you, as you can imagine, I got very depressed. Pulled my car in one of those garages. Had written a 17-page letter to my wife. Had wrote letters to my three children. And pulled my car in one of those garages and tried to kill myself. I could not imagine going to prison for nine years. A man, his name was Ian House. He was CFO of a pharmaceutical company. I didn't know him. He didn't know me. He said, if I'd spent a few hours with him a week, he would introduce me through Jesus using this tool, Operation Timothy, that uses the Bible through Scripture, just an outline that leads you to Scripture. And Ian Howes poured his life into me. My second week in a prison, a man named Chuck Colson showed up. Like Ian Howes, he read about me in the newspaper. He read about me in the Washington Post. In the 1970s, Chuck Colson was the White House counsel for President Nixon. His office right next to the Oval Office. Chuck Colson went to prison for the Watergate scandal in the 70s. And he read about me and he saw a lot of himself what he was reading when he read about me just going to prison in 1998, 22 years after his case had happened in 1976. So he showed up at prison. I didn't even know who he was. And he started telling me the same thing Ian Howes was telling me, that it was the beginning of my life and I was going to find my true purpose in life. He talked about how he went to Brown and Ivy League University and I went to Cornell and how he became top of his game in politics and, and at the White House and how I became top of my game in corporate America. Both of us in our 30s and both of us ended up in federal prison for $20 a month. And he said it was the best thing the world ever happened to him. And he started mentoring me and discipling me just like Ian Howes did. And he poured his life into me for almost 15 years. Three months after I met Chuck Olson, 10 months after I met Ian Howes, my third month in prison, I had eight and a half years yet to go, I got down on my knees and surrendered my life to Jesus Christ for the first time in my life at age 41, even though I went to church most of my life. I surrendered my life to Jesus. I made a, le a train wreck out of my life, and I turned the steering wheel over to Jesus. And it's amazing what Jesus started doing, even when I was in prison. And I started taking people one by one through Operation Timothy in federal prison. I took 61 men through Operation Timothy in federal prison. I look back at my 58 years of life, and the nine most productive years of my life were in federal prison at $20 a month. After earning seven figures for eight years in a row, and then nine years at $20 a month were the most productive years of my life. In reality, I became a free man in prison, and I was in prison prior to prison to that life of materialism, to that life of greed. It took all those distractions to be stripped away from me, for me to get to know God. How great the love of Jesus Christ. Upon the cross of Calvary blood was shed that pardons me no longer bound